All right. So now uh, getting into this game here, we're in loser's quarter. So this is top eight, if I remember how my numbers work correctly. And facing off two very seasoned Westchester players. Although I think, is Quinnage actually from? Well, whatever. The point is these two have played each other for years. And in this game, even, they faced off quite a bit. I don't know what the record is like between the two of them. I would guess that Noku would be favored here. Oh, that was actually possibly a huge opening for Noku. Ivy Sword Downer is big, and I'm sure there must have been a tiny opening for him to actually get it right there. But as it stands, slight advantage for Kroninja, but I think overall, oh my god. Uh, that was actually, think about that down air though, because if he had Char if Noku had charged that spa smash attack a little bit more, the downer would have whiffed. I don't know if that was, I don't think that could have been done on reaction. That was just barely the timing worked out for him. All right, now there's the Charizard. This boy has kill power. At this, yeah, at this juncture, I'd say Noku has slight advantage because of that heavy weight and the, oh, and I love that, riding up the, the side of the stage with the up -E, and there it is, the forward air. That's one of the things about Charizard in those last two situations. So many of his moves can kill. I don't know if this is going to do it without Rage. Yeah, he's living. Noku at 165. Greninja not even trying to go for a, uh, a Spring Gimp anymore. Yeah, instead, staying on stage, trying to get a two frame if possible. This Charizard is still hanging on. You're at 189. There's like this funny little range where it might be worth going back to Squirtle. Because if you're dead in one hit regardless, you might as well be Squirtle, who's like a much smaller frame and can get lower combos and lower percent. Um, granted, it's Sonic. So Sonic, you even, you see this. He's still struggling to take out this Charizard. He had no invincibility right there, but rolled on stage safe all the same. 208 right now on Noku. <laughs> oh boy. I feel like in the post match deconstruction, I already know what I would say Greninja needs to work on. He's still not finishing him off. 219%. He reads the rule but doesn't even do anything. At this point, a grab will do it. Oh, not that grab though. That grab almost did it as well. And 61% on that ledge situation. Lots of damage from the fire. And Noku gets the stock. Staying alive like that. Managing to turn this small lead into a massive one. And Kreninja, can he even kill him even still? He's living 235. Oh my god. Are you dead again? Why not? Why not just die here? I love that. Just the jab one. And Noku, he's still getting damage here. <laughs> Falling forward air, not enough to actually connect it to anything. I'm surprised we haven't really seen Grinja go for a grab. In the end, it's F tilt at what? 250 that finally takes it? Uh, it's good that he finally managed to take that first stock, but this might be a. Uh, we're pretty late into the stage of the game here, Grinja. Is the tag just Krin now? This tag is just now Krin, yes. All right, never mind. Ignore the ninja part. I'm I'm from yesteryear. I uh, <laughs> I learned from the old tomes. All right, so this is looking like pretty standard fare with a massive lead like this. Noku can just play exactly the way he wants to, especially against Sonic, a character who notoriously can. That was cute. Um, character who notoriously can be so hard to catch up when you are um when you're down against him. But he's not that great and he's, when he has to manage a comeback on his own. That's what we're seeing right here. Finally managing to get some decent percent and hold on. That's the back air coming from Grin there. Actually evening out the stocks. Well, he's at a bad percent right now. Oh, and okay, it is not a uh, self-destruct just yet. It is hanging on still. This isn't impossible except now it is. He's dead. Yeah, no, that was always... That was always going to be a rough one. And there you see it. I... I'm sorry, I actually have to add that to my Google Doc because I am con compiling a Google Doc of every time there's a three stock to one lead and how many times it's actually a comeback. It is like a literal 5% chance. Three stocks to one is like pretty dead in this game. <laughs> Game two, we're still on FD right now. Yeah, same stage. I definitely can agree with that. I feel like the, what 
what made that matchup, that last match rather, so decisive for Noku is he took the first stock. Really, if this had gone any other way, if he had, if uh, if Krin had managed one of those back throws to actually do it early on, he would have been the one with the lead, and I feel like we would have seen something similar, just you know, mirror image. But as it stands, now Noku is doing even better than before, getting a kill with Squirtle. You don't do that. He's supposed to just be a damage racker, not a kill machine. Yeesh. All right, speaking of damage racking, yeah, 52%. And comes out Ivysaur. Yeah, so this is something that you see a lot from Pokemon trainers. They'll get that nice solid damage with the Squirtle, and once you put your opponent off stage, you switch to Ivysaur because he is so good at edge guarding. Like the fact that neutral air is so long lasting, and you have down air, which is a monstrosity. You can do shenanigans with up B, which oh, are we gonna see something like that? Nope, it's just the clean down air. Three stocks to one. This is uh, kind of exactly where Kreninja saw himself in last game, except uh, significantly worse this time around. We're not talking Noku here at 250. This is, he's just sitting pretty at 82. Doesn't get punished for that rising board air. Yeah, Kreninja has definitely been missing a few. Uh, Noku isn't giving him too many opportunities to just get a clean punish in, but when he does, he's not necessarily optimally taking advantage of it. Ooh, that was really good, though. It's an, kind of an unpopular option for my resort to just go for that short hop up. Oh my god. Are you dead? Okay. <laughs> I mean, you still might be dead here. A little bit early on that two frame attempt. And now, Grin 101%. With that stage positioning, a grab won't even kill. But another back air. Those back airs have been putting in a lot of work for closing out stocks. Matters quite a bit, but there's so much work that needs to be done. And once again, Sonic, not really a character notorious for, oh, I'm just gonna kill you at super early percent. I mean, there's some cheesy things, but people who have played against Sonic enough don't usually fall for it. And I would expect that's what's no, gonna happen with Noku here. That up be not enough to kill, but 149% grab from Ivysaur from, <laughs> might be anywhere on stage will do it. Yeah, he's looking for it. And the fact that Ivysaur has a tether grab means that those, uh, I'm fairly certain that, look at you, he's hungry. Um, going for those spin dashes might get punished because you could just pivot grab. We'll see though. Oh man, the latest hit of Ivysaur's dash attack. And he's just running around, he's looking for that hit and that should do it. Down throw to game two victory. Noku moves on in the loser's bracket and Kreninja unfortunately is out at a seven, whatever. Great run coming from uh, Corinne, but yeah, that was...